Welcome to my channel. This video will be the start of a new series on my channel in which I will talk about some of the worst entertainment companies in the K-pop industry. And with that, I am not saying that they're the actual spawn of Satan, but a lot of these companies have done questionable things throughout the years. And I think it's kind of important to shed a light on this as a lot of us are or tend to be unaware of this since we're fans and we only want to see the good side of K-pop. And the first company that I will be talking about is Pledis Entertainment. Pledis Entertainment has a long history of mistreating and poorly managing their artists. And in this video, I will be breaking down all of the shady things Pledis has or haven't really done as a company since they tend not to do a lot for their artists. And hopefully you'll get a better understanding of why they are one of the worst entertainment companies at this moment. I just want to mention that I will be talking about some things that Pledis Entertainment has been accused of, um, but just know that these are allegations or might just be allegations since I won't have proof to back all of these accusations up. This sounds like it's a crime in investigation. It's not, but um, that being said, just know that some of these might just be allegations, nothing more than that. That being said, let's <laughs> spill the tea on Pledis Entertainment. Let's take it all the way back to 2007, the year that Pledis Entertainment was founded and that the Earth was cursed. I'm just kidding, but not really. <laughs> At the time, they were a relatively small entertainment company with limited resources. They were definitely nowhere near the level of YG Entertainment, JYP Entertainment, or SM Entertainment at all. They were very small at the time. And the first artist to ever make their debut under Pledis Entertainment was a solo artist named Som Dam B. Don't worry, she's fine. And that's not really relevant to the story, but I thought I would mention it anyways. Because she, until this day, is still signed with Pledis. But it wasn't until 2009 that Pledis Entertainment really established their name as a company by debuting their first ever girl group in January of 2009. The group consisted of five members and debuted with a song titled Ah! And to the company's surprise, After School's debut was fairly successful. And all seemed to be well for the next four years. After School were having regular comebacks, they debuted an iconic, iconic subunit named Orange Caramel, and they were receiving awards and even promoting overseas. They were becoming more and more successful. Did I just have like a lisp? <laughs> they were becoming more and more successful was what I was saying. And once again, they were really establishing a name for Pledis Entertainment as a company. And one thing that you could consider to be questionable is that Pledis constantly kept quote unquote, and I'm do I'm making air quotes, but you can't see that. They were graduating members of after school and after that they would add new members to the group. And to me that seems like they use the word graduate to cover up for the fact that the members either did not want to pursue a singing career anymore or because their contracts ended. I just want to add that if the members did not want to pursue a singing career anymore, that's not a bad thing. The problem with it is that Pledis just never honestly communicated why certain members would graduate. That's the issue. <laughs> but you know, that's not all too bad in comparison to what is about to come. In March of 2012, Pledis debuted their first ever boy group named New West. This group also had a fairly successful debut and their music video for Face became one of the most viewed debut music videos at the time. So clearly Pledis was doing something right, or so we thought, because soon enough it became quite clear that the entertainment company wasn't managing the group properly. The first issue is that Pledis wouldn't upload New West's schedules in advance, so fans were not able to go to the broadcasts that New West would attend. And that just really keeps them from building a loyal fan base, which is 
absolutely essential when you're a rookie group. Secondly, Pledis would cut New West's Korean promotions short so they could promote internationally. Now, Pledis really wanted New West to be an international group, but that is not a very smart move, definitely when you just debuted, because once again, that will keep you from building a loyal fan base in Korea. And since they're a Korean group, it's so important to build that fan base. So that, again, was not a very smart move on Pledis' end. But when they were promoting overseas, the group would have to travel using public transport in order to attend their scheduled broadcasts. There wasn't a manager driving them to their schedules, and this is extremely unsafe as any fans could be following them around and possibly try and harm them. And oftentimes the members wouldn't even be dressed or be wearing makeup and they had to do that themselves because they didn't have any stylist to do that for them. Another example of poor management is when the members would attend salsa events, managers and security would not step in when certain fans would get too close while taking pictures with the members. And this to me just shows that Pledis really did not have New West's best interest at heart. 2014 is when things started getting rough for Pledis Entertainment. Like I said, Pledis was never a big company to begin with, but at this time they were starting to run out of resources. And New West was kind of losing the hype they had initially, mainly because Pledis was not focusing on promoting them in Korea. And um, Orange Caramel and After School were still doing rather well at the time. But not too long after that, Pledis really hit rock bottom and had no money left, so they just stopped promoting After School and or Orange Caramel altogether, leaving After School fans with no closure. At this point, After School's last comeback was back in 2013, and during this time, four more members left or graduated the group, and Pledis decided to ship New West off to Japan completely neglecting the Korean fan base that New West had built over the years that they had been promoting. Three to four more years go by and in 2017 and 2018 members of both After School and New West took matters into their own hands when they competed on the Produce series in hopes of getting a second chance at making their debut and it's absolutely heartbreaking to watch interviews of both Kaeun of After School and the members of New West in the very first episodes of the show because they both talk about how four to five years pass with little to no comebacks for both of their respective groups and how Pledis Entertainment didn't even have faith in them anymore and they basically abandoned both of these groups. <laughs> One of the New West members did actually make the final cut and became a member of 101. And while Min Hyun was promoting with 101, Pledis Entertainment surprisingly revived New West by debuting New West W, a subunit consisting of the remaining four members of New West. And after 101 disbanded, Min Hyun returned to New West, and Pledis Entertainment is finally, finally giving New West the attention and promotion that they deserve. But we all know it's only because of 
the Produce 101 hype, sadly enough. Because clearly Pledis only cares when they can make profit off of them and that is so sad. As for after school, Lee ka -un, the member that competed on Produce 48, she un unfortunately did not make the final cut and did not become a member of Eyes One, but she did return to Pledis Entertainment afterwards and a lot of people were hoping that Pledis would either revive after school or debut ka -un alongside fellow Pledis trainee Ho Yujin, but since then there haven't been any updates on Kaun or After School, which is incredibly frustrating because at this point I think both the remaining members of After School and the fans just want closure. So now that we've covered After School and New East's past, we can move on to Pledis' more recent groups that they've also screwed over, but let's get into that right now. So previously I told you that Pledis Entertainment was basically close to bankrupt and Seventeen would quite literally become the group that would save Pledis Entertainment from bankruptcy. If it hadn't been for Seventeen, Pledis probably wouldn't have existed today. Anyways, but if you look at Seventeen's very first music video called Shining Diamond, you can definitely tell that this music video was made with very little to no budget because <laughs> sis looks cheap. Um, and I am pretty sure that Pledis thank their lucky stars because Seventeen became an overnight success and again literally saved them from bankruptcy. But just because Seventeen saved Pledis Entertainment from bankruptcy doesn't mean that they received better treatment in comparison to their senior groups. I have to say I feel like Seventeen was also treated very poorly but I mean I guess it's a little less worse in a way. But let's dive into that now. Um, if you look at 17 stages for Shining Diamond, Adore You, Pretty, Pretty You, and you look closely, you can tell that the members are not wearing in-ear monitors. And that is something the company should provide the idols with, which they did not. Um, and if you are wondering what in-ear monitors are, they're basically like the little earpieces and they help the artists to hear themselves while performing. And that is something that Pledis Entertainment should have provided Seventeen with. But they didn't do that. And the members of Seventeen obviously asked the company um, to, ver to provide them with these in-ear monitors. But the company straight up told them, buy it yourselves. Buy it yourselves. What? <laughs> and of course, a lot of these members did not have the money to pay for their own in-ear monitors. And so a lot of the members turn to their parents for help, but since these in-ear monitors tend to be pricey, a lot of them just ended up not wearing in-ear monitors or um, other members just wore regular headphones on stage because Pledis refused to provide them with actual in-ear monitors for the longest time. If you even, even if you look at their more like recent, well, recent stages like um, Manse, very nice, they're still not wearing them. It's... I, I have questions, Pledis, I really do. Because by this time, the company was doing better financially, so I just don't understand that they refused to provide them with necessary equipment to perform. But the shenanigans don't stop there. Staff of Pledis Entertainment have been accused of stealing food and gifts the members have been given by fans. It has also been alleged that the staff has verbally abused the members, by scolding them um, for their weight or for speaking in a certain dialect. And like, I do have to mention that these articles I have read on these accusations date from two years back, so I can't say that this is still accurate. Like, I can't fully confirm that Pledis Entertainment is still treating Seventeen poorly. But all of this and these accusations are kind of really messed up because Seventeen have allowed Pledis to build itself back up over the years and you can tell that Pledis Entertainment heavily relies on Seventeen's success. They have continuously promoted them throughout, throughout the years and really tried to push them and they really seem to be riding the Seventeen success wave and that's easy for them to do because Seventeen is a group that self-produces. Hoshi choreographs almost all of their choreographies alongside another choreographer. I don't know why that I put that in here because that is such a tongue twister. Oh my god. 
<laughs> anyways and we also have woozy who um produces composes and writes 80 percent of 17 songs so that just basically allows pletus to sit back relax and just invest money in them and ride the success wave but what i do have to give to pletus is that they actually were quite per persistent in promoting 17 which i guess they didn't have another option since they need 17 to keep their company alive um but yeah i'm glad that they didn't drop them like they did to after school and new west after having built themselves up again, Pledis was going to debut a new group and many people were actually able to get introduced to the members before they made their debut because most of them participated on the first season of Produce 101. And as you may or may not know, two of them made the final lineup and ended up making their debut in IOI. And this helped to get people hyped up for the debut of Pledis' new girl group. After IOI's promotions ended, the members that were under Pledis Entertainment returned to the company. The Pledis girls were preparing for their debut, making their debut in March of 2017 under the name Priston. And once again, things seemed to be off to a great start. Priston's debut did really well and later on the year they made another comeback. But two months later, it was announced that Kyla would be going on a hiatus due to health issues. Um, a lot of people also rumored that it was because of the cyberbullying, but I am pretty sure that it was actually due to her health issues. Um, but that didn't stop Preston's success though. At the end of 2017, they won several awards once again proving how successful they were. And Preston really did seem to have a promising future ahead of them. But going into 2018, there was a complete radio silence, like literally nothing. So Kyla went to the US and there had been no updates or no mentions of a comeback from Pledis until the entertainment announced that Preston would be debuting a subunit named Preston V, consisting of five members who released the bop of the year on May 28th called get it but after their promotions ended everything literally went silent again and highs or preston's fans grew frustrated even when preston's first anniversary rolled around there was no v live to celebrate it perhaps the company didn't allow them to do a live stream i don't really know but that was kind of shitty okay <laughs> in december of 2018 like fans were up set and they took matters into their own hands and they actually went to the Pletus Entertainment building and they stuck notes on the wall of the building demanding a comeback for Preston. Now here comes the buffoonery. The staff ended up taking down all of the notes really showing that they are not willing to listen or communicate with the fans at all. If that isn't like a shitty thing to do then I don't like I don't know what is. After the protest, there had been rumors um, of Preston preparing for a comeback, but none of these were actually confirmed by Pledis Entertainment because they never really confirm anything. Um, and in early 2019, there still hadn't been any updates regarding the girl group. And in February of 2019, Pledis was heavily criticized of being not the best company. Um, anyways, so Preston member Sheehan attended her graduation all by herself. She wasn't accompanied by a manager, security, anyone, you know, or any other Pledis staff, basically. And therefore, she wasn't allowed to take a picture in the photo zone um, like many other idol graduates can or do. And she did not receive any achievement awards again like many other graduates did, which is really upsetting. <laughs> but yeah, after this, um, there still were no updates. A lot of the members opened their social media accounts, which kind of to me was like a red flag because a lot of girl groups are not allowed to have social media. But a lot of the Preston members were actually opening up social media accounts, so I was like, ooh, where's this going? And on May 24th, Pledis Entertainment announced that Preston was going to disband after two years. 
of barely any promotions. Like, let's call it what it is because they, like, released too many albums and that was, like, about it. So, seven out of the ten members decided to terminate their contract with the company and three of the members decided to stay under Pledis Entertainment, which does not really seem like a smart idea to me, but, like, hey, you know, I'll support them anyways. <laughs> So that was the very first video in my Worst Entertainment Companies series and I am planning on talking about a couple of other questionable companies pretty soon. If there are other companies that you want me to expose, please let me know in the comments and I hope, I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Um, have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video guys. Bye!